What's up guys? Thanks for joining us for another episode of Two Guys in a Comic Book. I'm your host, Mike Poo, and I'm joined today with Jonathan Shores. Jonathan, how are you? Hey, Mike, how are you? Good to yeah, be here. Yeah. What's going on today, man? Uh, not a lot. I'm just trying to survive the heat right now. <laughs> yeah, no, it's, it's pretty hot. Yeah, and it's, it's a super hot day, you know, and I probably shouldn't have worn this black t-shirt, but I gotta support Game of Thrones. Game of Thrones. And, you know, as unfortunately Game of Thrones, it's over now, um, but it was... I don't know. Uh, unfortunately, yeah. Khal Drogo never came back. Yeah, so I got to figure out what I'm going to do with my son dates from now on. Well, I know. Yeah, it's going to be an Yeah, Yeah, so um, you look like someone from Game of Thrones. <laughs> I don't know if you've ever gotten that. I have gotten that. Maybe before. once yeah. or twice. Yeah, maybe yeah. once or twice, yeah. yeah. So, so do you get that or do you get Aquaman? Okay. <laughs> now I get Aquaman more than anything. Okay. You know, Khal Drogo's been gone for a while. Okay. Um, I looked like this before Aquaman, but nobody okay. cared. But okay. but now, um, especially if it's like a, a group of kids or something, or you know, it, it actually happens anywhere. The double takes just happen. <laughs> I guess they just have to make sure that he's not at the Wawa or, or the Target okay. or, or okay. whatever. Um, but yeah, and then every once in a while, a courageous uh, young man or uh -huh. lady will come over and be like, "Are you Aquaman?" And I'm like. No. Um, you, don't, you, don't, you don't ever say yes? Um, you know what? I have said yes. I have said yes. I also have a six-year-old who, okay. who believes that I'm Aquaman. Okay. Uh, and so when we go to Target or Walmart or, or whatever, if there's a toy or, or a sticker or something, you know, he might be playing me for a sucker, but he's like, okay. yeah, can we, can we get that? So if he believes that I'm Aquaman, we're going to ride that out as long as we can. Yeah. Yeah. So, so let, let me ask you, do you ever, let's say, do you ever go to a restaurant, okay? You know, Saturday night, prime time, 8 p.m., okay? And there's 30 people in front of you. The wait list is this long, okay? You're with friends, okay? You're on a date or whatever, you know? And you want to impress who you're with, right? You're like, wow, this is going to be like, this is a two-hour wait. And you, and, you, and you go like, you know, hey, watch this. You go to the front. <clears throat> yeah, uh, you got a table available? I've never done it. Um, I've never actually had the idea until okay. now, so I might try that. <laughs> uh, but no, I have not gotten anything you know free just for yeah. looking at unless you're offering. Uh, I, well, I uh, I don't have a restaurant, uh, yeah. <laughs> but 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 uh, but I don't know. Maybe one you might go into to Denny's one day, and the way you might come back, is, hey, your bill has been taken care of, sir. That would be fantastic. Yeah. Thanks for your contribution, <laughs> wink wink. <laughs> that would be fantastic. Uh, I do get. I did get. Um, approached a couple times at Comic-Con. Okay. A couple of Comic-Cons where people are like, are you cosplaying as yeah. Aquaman or are you just you or no, He's cosplaying on? as me. Yeah, right, right, right. <laughs> That's what I should have said. Next time I'll know. Yeah, yeah. So, so how did you get into the, the cosplay, you know, the um, you know, anime, the uh, superhero universe? How, how, how did you, tell me, tell us a little bit about your history with that. Yeah, yeah, I'm a, I'm a big time comic book fan. Okay. Um, I have an, an older brother who's actually just a best friend, but we've spent our whole lives together. We just call okay. each other brothers. And, and uh, when I was at his house, which I was every single weekend uh, of our childhood, he one day just broke out all these comic books. Okay. And um, his, we used to go to Costco and they would sell them in these like bundles, 20 comic okay. books for like a couple dollars or whatever. So he would bring them home and he did this whole thing and he's going to get mad at me for telling you this. <laughs> But he did this whole thing where he had like the rubber gloves, like uh -huh, you weren't allowed uh -huh. to touch the comic book. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so to me, he's a couple years older than me, than me. So to me, that was like, oh, this must be yeah. very special, very valuable. Sacred. Right, right. So you were only allowed to read them when you had the rubber gloves. So that okay. was a very special thing to break the that, comic book. That was pretty out. intense. That's pretty intense. Yeah, yeah. So it was kind of this elusive thing that I just I wanted. And then of course the '90s, uh, yeah. the X Men cartoon. Yeah, that's where we got. So, so let me ask you: your your friends, do they look like you too? <laughs> Actually, he looks more like um, Zach Galifianakis, oh, okay. which you'll also get mad at me for saying. But, but yeah, he looks yeah, exactly yeah. like him. You know, I was thinking if, if there were like I don't know, I don't know how, how many you know guys were, were you know you and your friends, but if you were like three or four or five guys, and you're a pretty big guy. What are you like six two, six, two, six, six three? three yeah, yeah. You're, you're big muscular guys. So there were like three of you guys walking around six two, six three. You know, you guys would look pretty intimidating. <laughs> Well, yeah. now, now we would, <laughs> yeah. yeah. But uh, but back then we were just you know scrawny, okay, scrawny guys. We wouldn't have been intimidating to almost anybody. Yeah, I mean, I, th I think if you, if you guys were like, if you were three six foot three guys at I don't know two hundred twenty five pounds, you would never have to wait at a restaurant ever again. Oh no, I mean, no, we walked around thinking <laughs> that we looked like that, but yeah, no. 
No. Yeah. So, but so, so we're going to go to a quick break, and we'll be right back and more with Jonathan. What's up, guys? We are back once again with Aquaman. So, Aquaman, or actually, you're, you know, I think you could play Aquaman. Seriously, yeah, I mean, you could. If not, you could be, you could be a uh, stand-in. You could, you could maybe be his evil twin brother for Aquaman too, which you know is coming out. Right? Well, that's a great idea. Yeah, that's no, idea. I'm serious. You know, you know, one of us. You know, I put it on. Put the put the pen. Put the ink on to the to the paper. Okay, to the page. Send it to California or wherever Marvel Studios is. Okay, <laughs> hey, I got a story. Part two, evil brother. It's it's not the worst idea. Okay, okay. so but I mean, it actually, I mean, you 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 are an actor. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Yep. So this is something that's not like out of the question. No, it's something I, I love to do, and um, I'm I just came off of filming a, a short film with a group called Stereoscope uh, Studios okay. that's actually based in Baltimore. They okay. had a great little story, and um, they decided to film part of it, and so that was an, uh, an awesome opportunity. And I, so far, that's as close as I've gotten okay. to Aquaman. But hey, it's a step. So, so what was your look in that in that movie? So it's a fantasy horror movie. Okay, yeah, it's called The Forgotten, um, and it's and it's just a little piece. It's a short film of a bigger story that, that the writer wrote, and uh, and I got to, I get to kind of be the sword fighting, wine okay. drinking, you know, best buddy, and uh, so I won't say anything. But yeah. So, so they didn't cast you as the doctor? <laughs> no, <laughs> no, no. no they didn't. I wonder why. <laughs> So yeah, so so do you have any uh, future projects coming up, or I mean, are you, do you are you looking more towards sci-fi, or you know, what's your genre? So I, right now the genre, it, it, fantasy stuff, okay, you know, comic book stuff, sci-fi stuff seems to work. It, you know, acting is based on your look, correct? And then when the talent matches the look, then boom, you're hired for for a job. Okay. Um, so. I, I try to just kind of, anything that's interesting, I try to put myself in for. Um, if it works out, great. If it doesn't, then you kind of have to have that short-term memory as an actor and move okay. on to the next thing. So, so like, what's my look? 
You're low? Yeah. Um, sushi chef? <laughs> I was going to say, like, action star. I was okay, going to oh, go okay, sushi okay, okay, I'll, I'll take yeah, that. Yeah, so action what, star. What, what, what type of action star? How about uh, a reboot of The Crow? Okay, oh, okay. That would be awesome. Okay, that's nice. Or maybe like a, um, like a uh, I don't know, uh, a crime-fighting lawyer? <laughs> yeah, that's exactly what I get when I first look yeah. at you, for sure. No, I, I, I get that a lot, you know? <laughs> you you know, look so like I'm, a crime-fighting lawyer. Yeah, you know, yeah. so I gotta, I gotta change my hair or something. I gotta talk to my stylist. <laughs> Well, it takes a while to grow hair like yeah. this, but you can do it, sure. Yeah, what, 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 what about facial hair? I've been, been waiting a very long time. I think I got a little bit right here, but it's, I don't know. I see some, yeah. yeah. No, the key to long hair and facial hair is laziness. That's the key. Okay, okay. If you don't want to shave, you don't like it, don't do it, and then you can look like I So the, this entire time, I thought I was using the wrong facial cream. No. And so I'm not, I'm not getting it. No. So it's not, it's not the facial cream? No, it's not the facial cream. No, okay. It's just you're putting too much time into it. Ah, That's okay, all. okay. Men, men, mental no. <laughs> All right, so so um, are you into uh, the uh, comic cons or, or, or anime cons? Are you into any of that stuff? So I like to go. I never did as a kid. Okay. I like to go to them now. I really appreciate, as I've gotten older, I really appreciate the art. I really okay. appreciate uh, the collaboration that goes into making something. Okay. The, 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 the artists, then they have inkers, then the writers, and uh -huh. all of those people have to come together to make Okay. You know, the comic book. So I really appreciate that. I like to go meet them and, and kind of pick their brain and have a short yeah. conversation with them. And then, of course, you know, when the actors show up, you know, when right. Punisher's there or something, you always like to... Punisher, you, you mean John Bernthal? John Bernthal, oh. yeah, yeah. You know, he's from Maryland. Yeah, I did. I did. Okay. Yeah, he's, he's a D.C. area native. Okay, okay. And so DMV. a lot of people don't know that, but yeah, he's... Yeah. He was quick to remind everybody, too, by the way. At Austin, uh, really? I went really? to meet him and he was like, you know, I'm from here, right? Yeah. And they're like... It's oh. like, John Bernthal, Maryland. John Bernthal, Maryland. John Bernthal, Maryland. <laughs> Not quite like that, but yeah, <laughs> but pretty close. Okay. So, so do you have a couple of favorite uh, creators or, or um, you know, uh, artists? Yeah, definitely. Um, Jim Lee. Okay. Who you could also go for. Really? Maybe the Jim Lee biopic. You okay. could play Jim Lee. Um, yeah, he was a big one. He was a big one because he, you know, he kind of started the, the 90s X-Men okay. launch and it was his art. And as a kid, I can remember going into the store and it would be the art okay. that hooked me. Not necessarily the name of the book or the story, but if it looked cool to me. I would probably buy it and, right. and read it. So Jim Lee was a big one. And then Michael Turner, who, who passed away quite a few years ago now, but um, his art, he did a lot with Marvel and DC. Uh -huh. um, his art was really influential. I just loved okay. the way it popped off the page. Yeah. So, so let me ask you, what, what's, what's like the major difference between a good artist and a so-so artist? Yeah, that's, I, I think, honestly, I think the, the time that they have put into it. Okay, so, so it's, it's not just like, coloring outside the lines, right? Right, no, no, but uh, for, so what always catches my eye is detail. Okay. When you can see the amount of detail that they've kind of put into something, you know, you can almost feel how long that took okay. and, and how, how much they had to look at it over okay. and over and over. So, so one thing I've noticed that, like for example, uh, let's just say X-Men, okay, the X-Men cartoon, um, there's been numerous Batman cartoons. Mm -hmm. It seems like, it, I mean, to me, okay, you know, I'm not a, I'm just a, regular guy, but it seems to me that, that some of the cartoons, the, the illustration, as we're getting, you know, farther or like, you know, away from what it was in the 90s, the graphics and the illustration, it seems like it's kind of slacking a little bit. Do, do you feel that way or is it just a different style? I, I, a little bit, but I think it is mostly okay. stylistic. I think okay. it is just different artists, it, you know, no two artists are the same. They all okay. come from a different perspective. And so, for some people, it may it may pop right away, and for some people, it may take a little bit longer to kind of to kind of get used to it. But, okay. Yeah. I I I've always wondered. I was like, why? Like they're like uh, I don't know. Like they're they're, they're slacking or something. I don't know. <laughs> well, it's I mean, you can do so much so quickly now in the advancements of technology and everything that sometimes uh, sometimes you want to push it out quicker than the quality always is it up to par. Okay. Sometimes, but okay, sounds good. So guys, we'll be right back. We'll take a quick break, and we'll be back with Jonathan.
again I'm your host Mike Boo this is Jonathan Shores so Jonathan I gotta ask you okay real quick Game of Thrones yeah okay last season yeah eh, did you feel that way too I, I felt I felt a little bit uh, I don't know if disappointed okay. is, is the right word because you know so much work yeah, goes yeah, into yeah. it when you stop and think about the actors and the crew and all of that stuff um, but yeah, I would have liked to have seen some. I mean, okay, so no surprise. Yeah. Cal Drogo is a favorite uh -huh. character. Uh, sure, I wanted him to come back and, you know, kill the Night King and save yeah. the day and ride off on a dragon into the sunset. But uh, not realistic and okay. clearly not what the writers were thinking. Yeah. Yeah, it's just that, you know, I don't know, it, the, 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 the rumor or the, um, the gossip, uh, you know, around town is that it's, it was too fast. Right, it, it was crammed. Maybe they needed to get out. I, I don't know. I'm just so it was. It was crammed, and, and things moved too fast, and it just kind of jumped from one thing to another. You know? Yeah. So I'm not a I'm not a book reader. And okay. I haven't read I've read the books. Okay. Um. So all the exposure I had to Game of Thrones was from season one yeah. all the way to the end. Uh. So I didn't have some of those expectations. Okay. Uh. And I also didn't know any. I didn't have any clue where we were going. Okay. Um. So it. But even though it. Even that said, it. It did seem to kind of at the end. Push because yeah, they knew the deadline yeah. was coming. They knew the end was coming. We got to finish this story somehow. But uh, maybe contrary to popular belief, I didn't think it was that bad. Okay, no, I, I, I no, I, I didn't think it was bad at all. There was one episode that it was maybe a little bit hard to see. Yeah. <laughs> okay. you, you think it was hard? Did you have to like turn up your contrast on your TV? Yeah. So no, I didn't. I didn't okay. until people started like posting online. Like, if you do this, you can actually see what's going on. Um, I, I thought, you know, there's a lot of symbolism in the show. 
And I, again, I don't know if it's that way in the books, but they used a lot of symbolism in, yeah, in the show. Yeah. And so I think there was a symbolic nature to this is the darkest it's ever going to get. This yeah, is the yeah. winter that's yeah. been coming for eight seasons or whatever it ended up. And I think it was also very, very realistic. Yeah. You know, if you're in a battle in the middle of the night, it's yeah, going to be yeah. pretty tough to see. You know, what was funny was that I asked a friend of mine, I was like, hey, did you see that episode last night? It was like hard to see. He was like, no, he was like, no, I didn't see it. Like, you didn't see it? No, no, no. He's like, I saw it, but I, I, I couldn't see it. You know, like, yeah, yeah. Just, boom. yeah. <laughs> but it, did have, it had a horror element to it. I yeah. mean, so oftentimes, you know, some of the best movies and some of the best scary moments of uh -huh. film are when something happens and you don't quite understand exactly what's happening. Yeah, yeah. And so that had that feel to it where you you're not 100 percent sure what's coming. Yeah. So, but, but, so let me let me ask you a little more specific at, at the very end. You know, you had some surprising deaths with some of the main characters. Do you think that kind of moved along a little bit too fast? Yeah, I think it did. I think it was a little bit unexpected. I know by that point, everybody had their theory of what yeah. was going to happen and what would make sense. Uh, and they threw a little curveball. Yeah, I yeah. I just, I just felt like it, it was rushed. And it was, you know, you, you, you take, uh, I don't know, how many how many years was it? Seven years? or I, It was more than yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. So, it, so it, you know, like, let's say 10 years, right? Mm -hmm. to, to create the story, to create these characters, right? And then the last episode, say, okay, all right, you know what? Death, death touch, you're dead. Yeah. Death touch, you're dead, and that's how you're gonna go out. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And, and, and you know, no, not 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 to say anything bad about the show, or I mean, which we're not. But I just, you know, I think, um, you know, just like anything else, when you have the stakes this high, it's hard to go higher. Yeah. It's hard. It's hard to go bigger. Right. Yeah. It's hard to obviously yeah. go bigger than what they already done. I mean, they have yeah. seasons of of film where they just broken through planes and yeah. broken through stereotypes and surprised people yeah. and all that stuff. So at, at some point it's like, what what else can possibly happen? Yeah. And George R. R. Martin famously said that he's not a big fan of happy endings. Yeah, yeah. So it would be no surprise to me if, if the books are even right, right. you know, more so in that yeah. lane. Um, yeah, so that's uh, yeah, I think uh, you know, it, it's a great job. It's a great job. But you know, maybe uh, they're they're coming out with another I don't know. I I heard from someone they're going to continue this, you know, with the spin-off or something. So maybe, you know, they'll kind of, I don't know, I don't want to say redeem, but they'll have some more material for us. It's possible. Yeah. So, so Jonathan, before we go, do you have any last thoughts you want to share with us? Um, I, well, thank you for having me, no, for one. Thank you for being here. Um, and uh, I'm looking forward to it. There's a rumor that, um, in the comic book context, there's a rumor that that X-Men cartoon is kind of being oh, rebooted. Really? Um, yeah, and I, I think a lot of people uh, from that generation go right to the X-Men cartoon okay. as a place where they started or really got into comic books. It's the first place you get a voice to some of these characters. Okay. It's the first place you get to see some of these stories played out in action, you know, okay. rather than just on the page. So um, I'm really looking forward to that. If that's true, that's something that I'll, I'll check out. Wow, yeah, that's, yeah. That, that's really exciting. So, these, so this, these would be like original characters, not like the new generation of... Who knows? Who knows? Okay. Who knows? But I mean, you know, the X-Men is kind of... Timeless, you know, that's okay. if you want to talk about differences between Marvel and DC sometimes, you know, Marvel has this thing where they're just characters for the most part don't get old. Yeah, yeah, they don't yeah. die or stay dead for very right. long. So, right. yeah, it's probably going to be a great mixture of old and new, and it's going to get that old audience and the new audience. Yeah. Or if they die, they just bring it back to life. That's right, yeah. Yeah, yeah. through some, you know, Marvel way, right? Yeah, which is usually don't discuss it at all. You're, <laughs> no, you're just alive. Now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, Jonathan, thanks for yeah, being friend. here today. Thank you. You guys, this is Jonathan Shores, and he's also an actor. So, if you guys, you know, DC, if, you, if you're making a part two Aquaman, this is your guy. All right, guys, thanks for joining us. See you next time on Two Guys in the Comic Book.